What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT, and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com. And don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Established over 100 years ago, Watkins Books is one of the world's oldest and leading independent bookshops specializing in esoterica. We have the widest selection of esoteric books in the UK, and our friendly and knowledgeable staff are here to assist you in a unique ambience of our shop. So come and visit us in the heart of London as we're open every day. The Moore Show is supported by Mindscape, Paranormal and UFO Matrix magazines. Available for download on all major digital platforms. The comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the view of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliate or sponsors. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online, you're now watching the UK's only alternative late night talk show, and I'm your host, Kevin Moore. For the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. On today's show, I'm joined with Tony Luis Rivera, who discovered the vital role body, mind, spirit and emotions play in healing while attending to the many people seeking her care. Now, Dr. Tony has become a master teacher, focusing on teaching clients about self-healing through contacting their own inner wisdom and teaching other practitioners intuitive listening to personalize their work with clients. Now, she has discovered a passion for writing and is launching a new workshop series, Intuitive Mastery. She joins me today to discuss her latest book, The Propelled Heart, Moving from Injury to Insight. Dr. Tony Luisa Rivera, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to uh, have you with our audience. Um, Tony, just getting to the point here, um, just what, what, what is your purpose? What, what, what is it you do? I am a person who is interested in helping other people realize that their body is their greatest ally and that all the resources they need to heal are within them. Right. Okay. Now, there, that is something I can work with. That absolutely. So yeah, all answers lie within. And are we saying, therefore, any issue that we have in the body is representative of something, a, a, deep, a deeper issue, basically? spiritually well yes i would say that any issue we have in the body in our emotional content in our life recurring situations in our life that we don't like are actually we have the resources they're telling us that there's some message we need to listen to and if we tune in we can actually heal that part of our lives and uh, our whole life 
Okay, okay. And how long have you been doing this type of work for? I have been in private practice for 30 years, and I've been teaching for 20 years. So um, wow. I've seen a lot, and I feel I've distilled down some truths that people can utilize right now in their lives. That's great. That's great. And, and um, you know, normally I'd ask this, ask this question at the end, but uh, is, does the client have to be in your presence to do this, or can it be done remotely as well? Well, you know, I, I feel that, yes, it can be done remotely. I um, have, There's two aspects to my work. One is working with private clients, and the other is teaching workshops and teaching people how to work with themselves. And that's really my passion right now is really there's a lot we can do for ourselves. And uh, it's in anyone's purview. Anyone can learn to do this. So I do online webinars and also live uh, workshops. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The the power of technology, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, with, yes. with the webinars and, and what you have, the people that you can reach and help as well. Now, for you to get into this work, what what was the catalyst really for you to, to enter into this field or was there many? Well, it's kind of interesting how I uh, learned about chiropractic kind of quite by accident. And uh, but I knew as soon as I heard about chiropractic that I was born to do that. And then in my first 10 years of practice, I realized that the mental emotional issues in somebody's life actually is what creates the physical problems. So I started to study uh, to learn how to address those kind of issues. And it's been about 20 years, as I say, working in that field. And um, I actually, that's how I learned about my own issues that were uh, forgotten uh, problems from my childhood, pr forgotten sh sexual abuse from my childhood. And it was in my receiving this very specific kind of touch that I realized that those forgotten uh, memories, if you will, were driving my life. And um, so. Right. Okay. So, so prior to getting into this work then, and getting into the line that you're in now, um, what what person were you uh, with, with having those, um, oh, with, with having that abuse, that forgotten abuse, sort of in the in the dark and not not dealt with in a sense? Exactly. You know, I was so happy to find chiropractic, and um, I actually finished school and started my own private practice at 26. And um, I was in a remote part of the island in Puerto Rico, and I saw 70 people a day. I worked six days a week, 12-hour days. I was a workaholic to the max and had no boundaries and did not take care of myself. And it was in that, the drive to help others, when I started studying about the Rubenfeld Synergy Method, which is a not chiropractic, that is a body-mind emotional work, and it's about discovering what your body's telling you. I started discovering that my body was holding some secrets that were actually driving me to work like I did. I actually needed 70 people a day to tell me I was good. And I started wondering, what makes me think I'm so bad? And then when I started actually having the memories, I realized that that was from childhood, that the sexual abuse my mother not being able to handle it and actually tell me that I wasn't at fault, which is very important that, you know, people realize you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> um, that's how I started to realize, my goodness, I needed all those people to tell me I was good because my body had actually in, uh, got stuck in the cells that I was bad, you know, so. Did, did you have a partner at that time as well? Uh, yes, I actually was married uh, when I first started having the memories, and uh, he was very supportive in uh, understanding what I had to go through because there's different phases, you know, people have to go through, and I don't mean to imply with the book, you know, saying going from injury to insight, when we stay in injury, my book, The Propelled Heart, Moving from Injury to Insight, the the injury, if we get stuck in that saying, why me, um, how could they do that to me, that is an important part. But then we need to move forward through the anger, through the hurt, through the sadness, and realize that we actually learn some lessons. We can grow from them. And the insight part is when you turn those uh, lessons into gifts that you can give to others. 
so that's the insight part. Yeah, you know, but we could go through a whole life, though, couldn't we, of not wanting to look at parts of our life and heal them. Um, you know, we may have come across spiritual material, but it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we, we are destined to do that. I mean, we all have free will, but right. I don't think some of us even, even want to go down that path. It's so true. I have had people, I remember uh, uh, one person tell me, you know, I know my ex-wife bothers me and I don't want to talk about it. You know, and the problem is that is certainly a choice. You know, we we uh, don't have to go through uh, the muck, if you will. And if we don't face the issues and heal the wounds, then we are destined to suffer physical problems, physical ailments and ultimately organ disease. So I think that uh, it behooves us to look at these things and try to move through them and in acknowledging them it's not like you have to dwell on it um, sometimes people ask me do I have to remember every little thing no your body will bring up what you need to remember to heal and many times it's just acknowledging it and knowing it and the body will release it but burying it brings up the physical symptoms when we acknowledge it can that bring up symptoms as well it can in the short term, but usually there's immediate relief in acknowledging. Um, now, it can open uh, a door, okay? So, for example, I started getting glimpses and things, and this happens with clients. And in that session, there'll be a relief of what was remembered and acknowledged, but then perhaps there'll be a dream and another memory. So then we have to go to that. But it's not like talk therapy. When you, when you work with the body... Uh, talk therapy has its place, uh, but when you work with the body, you only have to work with what the body brings forward. You don't have to go through with a chronology at this age and that date and this thing. You don't have to talk about it. Only what the body brings up and then experience it, acknowledge it, and many times the body will release. So it is an interesting combination of things there. So... Can it be a, a whole range of medical issues that the body can be expressing that, that, that could be a side effect of something not healed within or something bigger not, not dealt with in a sense, whether it be a family issue, so whatever it is in your past. And, and how do we recognize what body issue is what part that we've not dealt with? That's really a good question. Very good. Because, uh, you know, many times things appear to be like uh, an accident. I fell down the stairs and I hurt my knee. Um, and other issues don't seem to have a reason. You know, people will say, my knee hurts and I didn't do anything. I don't know why it hurts, etc. And with either one, it behooves us to listen to how it feels. Because if we only want to remove the symptom, if there is anything else there, we'll miss it. So in what I do when I work with people is in working with the area to physically, like working on the knee, we also want to have the person become aware. How does it feel to you? Is it pinching? Is it pulsing? Is there a color? Is there a memory? And it will emerge of itself. So uh, the, it's in the asking that we find out if there's anything related to it. So really the answer that we're looking for, what is body parts is related to what potential issue? It may just be one, it may be a foot, maybe you've got a limp, right? Whatever, that, that, that's come over time, right? Um, but to, uh, to find that answer out, really we have to go within, go silent, maybe even to meditation, and just seek if there is a voice that comes back to us or if our own voice comes back to us with an answer, maybe. Right. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they want to talk at the part. Like um, if I'll say, what message would you like to send to your knee? And they start to say, stop hurting now. You're okay. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't really work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's similar to if you imagine someone talking to you, and they say, um, you know, you say, I'm upset. And I say, oh, just get over it. You're okay. It tends to make the symptom worse. <laughs> so uh, it's really a thing of saying, uh, I know that you're hurting right now. And I feel frustration. Uh, do you have a message for me? And then be quiet. 
and allow a space of time for the message to come back. And sometimes we need help, and hence my developing my workshop series and my online webinars, because it's a it's a different way of living in our Western culture. <laughs> what of what of course it is, but when you know sometimes when it's not healing, or when you know what. It, <sighs> If you know, if if modern day Western medicine isn't unable to really heal it, then you know people will look for an alternative uh, way forward, won't they? Exactly. I, you know what uh, pops into my mind? Uh, many oh, it was probably six or seven years ago. I had a woman come to me that had had a skiing accident, and and her leg ended up with her leg behind her body and her foot by her head. Okay. So her leg was shattered and she was taken to emergency and without really asking her permission, what they had to do was put a uh, steel rod in her leg where the marrow would be. Uh, okay. So when she came to me, it had been already uh, eight months since the surgery and since the accident and the bone was not healing. The bone was not healing. And um, actually, she was losing bone mass, and they didn't know what they were going to do because even with the bar in there, the bone around that bar was weak, and she was very prone. They didn't know what they were going to do. And so I, she came in, and I, had, I walked her through experiencing what her leg felt like, and then actually what came up was the feelings about being so hurt. And so we went through a whole uh, a session about this. Now, she was telling me she was going to go to the orthopedic surgeon and have an x-ray. And it was the x-ray was like in 10 days. And I said, you know, I really wish you would delay that x-ray and let's do two or three sessions before that x-ray. And I didn't want her to get discouraged. Well, she went ahead and did the x-ray, and lo and behold, in 10 days, the bone was significantly starting to heal that even the surgeon said to her, hey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, because what I was doing wasn't helping you. Whatever you've done differently, and the only thing was have sessions with me. Um, it's amazing how something that even wasn't healing, the piece that could be missing is that mental, emotional, spiritual aspect of the experience of that body part. It's it's amazing. Our body cells are alive. They're a community. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's right. And we're able to talk to them, which we, it's, it's a science that we don't understand right now. The consciousness aspect, it's almost like it's there's a universe within us. Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a which whole community. Get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, mm, I suppose, you know, we can be our biggest resistance sometimes, can't we, to to want to go down this path and, and to look at this. Um, yes. yes, I suppose we are. Um, what state or stage are people at when they come to your door then? Is it, as I've said, that they've just tried everything or uh, is there an, is, is, are they guided to you? Well, there's many different stages. Some people come and they are just coming because they've heard that uh, whatever I do works, they're going to get relief, and people will say, just go to her. Don't ask me what she does, just go, and she'll explain it. Uh, other people come because they say, I know you work with the body, mind, emotional um, convergence, that spiritual aspect also, and I want that. So I do get all kinds. I, I've had people who've never even had a massage before to people who have had shamanic healing and all kinds of things. So there's quite a range here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I'm at. And so we see all kinds. And, yeah. and I suppose that, that um, the idea that, you know, if we've not healed something from the past, it's, it's, it's sort of... Uh, it's embedded in into ourselves that that that, that um, negativeness of that memory, and in a sense, I'm guessing, and um, it's on a soul level as well. It's probably both, mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's it's it it wouldn't really matter if it was you know from being bullied to to as you did on the on the, on the real nasty scale sexual abuse or whatever it may be it's 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 the whole range of issues isn't it 
Well, it is. And unfortunately, our body, because we are programmed to survive, because our body and our nervous system learns, especially those things that are vital to survival, when, when we have an experience that is highly charged emotionally, uh, it does make an indelible imprint on our nervous system. And uh, so that high excitation states, which usually happen in some kind of trauma, will make an imprint on our brain and elicit this kind of uh, a, a pathway in our brain of trauma that because of that survival thing that all humans do, those things get, get most remembered. Um, and what's interesting and also a new field is that this idea of awe, A-W-E, when we experience awe, this also makes a very... Uh, uh, a reaction within our body that is extremely pleasurable and can also make a deep imprint on us. And unfortunately, in our society, we tend to focus more on, uh, uh, we were talking about that sensational, traumatic kind of thing. And also what we want to start looking at and what the science is showing is that those states of things that create an awe and a wonder about life in us are very important to include to heal and to live a good life. Absolutely. Do you feel that the patients that have come to see you have created their own reality? They've, they've created uh, this illness that they've got for some bigger reason. Boy, that's a great question. <laughs> and it can be loaded for some people. But, you know, we have that thing nowadays, it's called New Age Guilt. And we want to really watch out for that. It's not that to say that, uh, oh my God, I have cancer. Now what have I done? I made myself like this. And I don't feel that it's that we create these things. I feel that life is trying to have us have certain experiences so that we can heal these issues that we have. And I feel that God or goddess or the universe or universal intelligence, whatever you want to call it, that which we are a part of, is setting a stage for us to have a certain experience so that we can feel the emotions and move through and grow from these experiences. So I, I don't think we actually create them, but uh, they're tailor-made for us, if you will. <laughs> well, e even that's a big one to swallow as well, absolutely. But if we do, maybe it's more self-empowering to say if, if that is the case and maybe at a, a soul level, an over-soul level that's been chosen – with our agreement, then we can agree to get out of it as well. Exactly. And I truly feel that we are up to all the challenges that we're facing in our life. And it is a big uh, thing to do with our attitude about it. Again, to get out of the victim thing as quickly as possible. That is a stage of it. You know, why me? But we need to turn why into what for and what can I learn from it. So uh, to really look at evolving those, um, those questions into learning. What if the disease, though, or the issue that we, they, the clients have is, is uh, obviously to them, it's a recent um, you know, problem that they've, uh, that, that's, been, that's happened to them, whatever it may be. But what if the actual issue is quite recent as well? So life, you know, something's happened in their life where, where life is trying to tell them something by using their body as a way to express it. But it's, it's a recent issue. It's not so, 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 so distant in the past. Right. It's the same. You know, with, I feel that the life itself is a metaphor. And so even something recent, you know, that's happened, let's say, um, you know, your wife left you or your husband left you. And the feelings that you experience in that, be it betrayal, anger, frustration, and um, really experiencing those emotions and realizing what's happening, there's the key to turning it around and moving forward and not staying in the, in the victim of, of that experience. So even if it's recent, it's really looking at um, your feelings and uh, what that's showing you about what you have to learn. Do you think it could be giving you the chance to feel emotions for the first time if you've never really given yourself that space to do that in this lifetime? Yeah, I, I do. I feel that even with myself, I, 
I, I wasn't totally numb, but that's one of the chapters in the book too, numb to life. I started realizing that um, in my life, when I looked back, now this is, I was already a doctor. I had great success. I, many, many, you know, a large office, lots of money, all that stuff. And I, when I first went to look at, I took a small training and they were asking us to look at the events in our life and they wanted us to uh, look at a, ch a problem we wanted to change and then to get five good events in our life. And I just had no relationship to good. I, I was like, well, I graduated from college with honors. I guess that's good. Uh, but I didn't really, it didn't give me a great joy. And I, I realized that I was very plateaued. I knew the difference between good and bad, but neither one of them really affected me. I was kind of just flat. And so, you know, <laughs> sometimes we need to get shook up to feel... Um, and I, I feel that we have to be willing to feel the bad so that we can really feel the good. It's crazy, but, but uh, it's so true, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've met people who know this truth, yet they deny it to themselves when it comes to really looking at the core issue. You know, that they would, you know, if they listen to this, they would know this truth, yet they wouldn't want to maybe go down this road to look at this as a potential. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy what I'm saying, but I've seen those people as well. Yes, and I think that, you know, if somebody had come up to me and said, well, uh, you know, you need to go to the deepest, darkest place in your life so that you can, uh, so that you can be happy. I, I might, if it presented to me in that way, I might have said, "Well, you know, may, maybe what I'm doing is okay." You know, I don't want to. But <laughs> no, that, that, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because because who wants to face to happen, that? Yeah. <laughs> but what starts to happen with people? What I've seen is that. In our, in our late 30s, 40s, as we start to grow in our, in our maturity and we have more resources, the body, mind, spirit, which is all one, starts to say, okay, she's ready to remember now. And it starts to pop up in uh, dreams or in sensations. Now, some people choose to take drugs or drink so they don't feel these things. But... Um, you know, it's not that bad. You really can survive it. It's okay to feel the hurt and the sadness and the pain. And it, it you come around and then there's a higher joy. So I encourage people to, uh, I understand if you don't want to do it. And <laughs> it really uh, makes a different life when you look at those things. Oh, I bet it is. You, I mean, you think of all the clients that, that, that have come through your door, you know, yeah, and, and the healing that you've given them and, and the transformation that's taken place with their input as well. They've got to put their two oh, pence in Oh, definitely. As well. Yeah. I can't, yeah. you know, um, it's, I'm really good at what I do physically. I'm really good. And if the person is not there 100% and putting their part in, uh, it's going to recur and come back. I mean, the, the person has to be active. Yeah, because you're not there to save them. You're Thank there you. as a healer. You're there to guide them. I'm a facilitator. Actually, yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. a facilitator for if they wish to listen and listen to what their body's trying to tell them, whether it's, like I said before, even a voice of their voice coming back in their head, which is their oversoul or higher self coming through, just the words, you know, we don't need to use these words, but something's coming through then, you know, they're taking that part of the journey of the responsibility as well in the healing as well and, and, and getting... And, it, and it, the whole thing's a spiritual journey, isn't it? Because it, it really does open people's eyes up, I bet, when they come to you that there is a, a bigger dimension to all this. Oh, my gosh. And it's amazing, really. I, and sometimes I have to remind myself, some, some certain types of cases I get kind of drawn into or, uh, you know, more invested, and I have to remind myself, this is that person's spiritual journey. This is their challenge. It's the, up to them to meet this challenge. I'm only here to assist. It's their part. I have my healing to do. They have theirs. <laughs> so. Well, that's it. That's it. You're not there to become a caretaker. Absolutely not. And do you do you feel sometimes? Yeah, I suppose you have to. You know, you have to protect yourself, don't you? In in a sense, because you can't take their energies on. 
Right, exactly. And it is a, we are energy beings and um, we do have an interaction on the energetic level also. And I did experience that in, in my practice in Puerto Rico and I had the fortune that a teacher came along and showed me how different types of injury in the spine would either suck or push, etc. And how unwittingly, when I first was practicing, I was actually having a lot of problems with my uh, wrists, elbows, and shoulders. At that time, I was doing structural chiropractic where I was moving the bones with my hands. I don't do that now. I do it on a subtler level. But at that time, and I had a lot of problems with all three joints, both arms. And he said, oh, what you're doing is sucking out. You want to help so much that you're sucking out the injury and it's, it's lodging in your joints. And with his coaching, I then realized that actually in my mind, I had never noticed that when someone was really hurt, I was actually saying in my mind, give it to me, God, give it to me. I can take it. And um, boy, that's a mistake. <laughs> that's a mistake. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, there's been a lot of learning, and you're still learning right now. Absolutely. Yes. Every I bet every day is a learning in a sense. Um, it is for me. Um, what about children then? I, is there a minimum age for this type of work then, in a sense? Well, you know, no. Uh, if we're I, there's no minimum and there's no maximum. You know, sometimes people, older people, will say, "Well, you know, what can you do for me?" And you know, I'm 90. Uh, if you're alive, you can heal. Okay. Once you're dead, give it up. Okay. So, um, and the same with babies, even though you're not talking, it's on an energetic level, really, that you're interacting with that, the new life, that new baby and, uh, young children. It's amazing. I, I have little kids, uh, three, four, five years old, and they will tell their parents, I need to go see Dr. Tony. And, uh, and they usually, they want their own time with me. They'll tell their parents, I want my private time with Dr. Tony. And the parents wait in the reception room because they want to talk, they want to tell me, and they want to experience um, their own body without their parents interfering. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, I did. I did wonder. I did wonder. You know, if there if there wasn't a sort of age limit to, to this type of work, but there isn't. As you say, as long as you've got a pulse, you're okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, now, I w would you say that most chiropractors are would be spiritual? That would be implying a spiritual aspect to this work, or are you quite unique? Well, I think there is a varying levels of how much how much any doctor wants to get involved in the spiritual aspect of the of the client or the patient's life. I like to call people my clients because uh, I feel that we're working together instead of uh, you know the patient aspect. And I think uh, ch chiropractors tend to tend towards the spiritual just because we're touching the person. You're actually close. And uh, you get to know your, your clients in a very much more personal way. And many times you're seeing the whole family, so you're part of the family uh, rather than the more medical aspect where maybe the doctor's on the other side of the desk and might not even ever touch you, you know. So I, I um, but it depends on how, what people are comfortable with, <laughs> you know. Yes. I de definitely tended towards that. I started meditating very young and uh, in high school actually and um, came and went with it until I started my private practice when I was 26 but I definitely tended towards the spiritual aspects. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's great that you are. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't have done this, you know, profound book as well, uh, and and you know, you wouldn't be helping the people in, in in this special way that you are. With the book, then, I mean, obviously, I mean, none of us think we're going to ever, ever write a book. Um, was this an easy book to write? No, <laughs> it was hard. I uh, I had always toyed with the idea of writing a book because I'm a storyteller and I have had a very interesting life. And um, people say, oh, you should write a book. And then a couple years ago, I said, now's the time to write the book. And I was not planning to include my personal story. I was going to write uh, for others. You know, and just like I do everything in my life, it starts as a mission for others. And then 
that story really wanted to be told. And I, I, it's been hard for me, but another part of my healing to expose myself in the way I do in the book. And, uh, but many people, I've had great feedback from people that um, have had hard things in their life and uh, they're appreciating the honesty of sharing that, you know, we can heal from the most horrible things. We're human. We all have wounds and we can heal from whatever has been presented us. So uh, the book took about a year and a half to write, which some people say is fast. I did have some great mentors and um, I'm just glad that it's been helping people. Absolutely. Well, I, w- I would say that's that's pretty quick. Yeah, as books go. I mean, I've I've interviewed other people where you know we're talking a few more than uh, just 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 a couple of years uh, with your work as well. Um, obviously, like as you say, it's, you know, to put out your backstory is um, quite brave of you. Um, do you think you had to go through the sexual abuse in a sense for you to be able to do the type of work that you're doing now? You know, it, that's a really interesting question. And I, you know, I, again, here we get into controversial topics. I do believe in uh, reincarnation and past lives. And it was a real breakthrough for me in my own healing to realize I had a, an epiphany, if you will, that the people who abused me are characters from many lifetimes. And that in other lifetimes, I had killed even some of these people and in this lifetime they weren't going to kill me they were just going to hurt me okay (laughs) and um you know that gave me a perspective that allowed me to forgive them because i realized that i also had perpetrated injury uh, on others and these people so um it gave me a perspective that helped me and i truly believe that the sensitivity, my empathy, my ability to read people uh, and use touch in the way that I do is from having uh, experienced such an intense uh, situations in my youth. Um, I don't appreciate when I have the nightmares of terror. Yes, okay. But that's pretty much done now, you know. I, uh, I used to wake up with uh, terror and not have any reason to it, uh, you know, according to my life now, you know. And, um, but once I started healing and realizing these other issues uh, and I've moved forward with the gift of it, uh, that has relieved. I don't wake up terrified at night anymore. You know? No, no. Yeah. I mean, I've I've done I've done interviews on uh, male survivors of sexual abuse, and I like I've said in previous shows, I will get other survivors on of, of sexual abuse because I think it's something that that's important, uh, you know, to put out there and and to get people to share their stories, even though it, it's not the the easiest subject to for some to listen to. It's the, this is real world stuff, uh, but I think it's profound that the way that you come from it. Um, and, and the healing that you've given yourself to look at it this from this way, which some people will, you know, wouldn't be able to go down. But right. I think a lot, a lot of people would listen to this who are into these subjects would say, you know what, that resonates what she's saying. That's yes. so true. Yes. Mm. Yes. Some people are just aren't able to accept the idea of past lives and things. But in my spiritual uh, life and with my spiritual teachers, it just makes sense of life. How, how could we just be born and die and that's it, you know? I think we're here to learn, and um, some of us have experienced and learned things in other lives and come, for example, and just don't steal because we've already learned that lesson. And there's other people who still are going through. They can't resist. They see something to steal. They have to steal it. They haven't learned yet. (laughs) No. No, ab- absolutely, absolutely. And how did your fa- I mean, is there any surviving family members that that were uh, that are still alive right now? There are. You know, this was um, as I talk about in the book. It wasn't really about uh, confronting any individual uh, with what happened to me and making them pay or no. you know anything like no, that. Of course not. Uh, the real thing, the real issue, is to realize uh, that I can heal. And I don't need to make somebody else pay for my healing. And I had the great good fortune that my father is still with me. And I was able to actually sit with him. And my mom never told me it wasn't my fault. 
But I sat with my dad I before I wrote the book, of course, and I told him what had happened and how I knew it was real and all the physical things that let me know. And I said, Dad, I need you to tell me that it wasn't my fault. And I, he was able to be with me and, and tell me that, of course, it wasn't my fault, that it was the older people, uh, the adults that had made choices to hurt me and do these things with me, and that it wasn't my fault. So uh, that my dad, and he's still with me now, but that my dad was able to go there with me. He's a really special person, and um, so that was great. <laughs> That's a really beautiful story. Now, thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, this is going to lead on to something else right now as well, which is forgiveness. Because obviously, you know, um, do your clients find that, that unless they forgive themselves, um, then the healing is not as quick or it, it doesn't take place? I mean... Boy, you are hitting some great questions because <laughs> that is one of the keys. And many times the hardest thing I found with myself even though my dad could tell me it wasn't my fault, me forgiving myself. And uh, I find with clients that there's all those steps of forgiving the others if they were involved, etc. But actually, the key and core to ending it is forgiving yourself for whatever role you played, for choices you made after having these experiences. Um is uh is core to fit it well you know are we ever finished i think you know when we finish we die maybe <laughs> but uh it's core to healing is forgiving yourself you know and realizing that that um you know the role you played and the things that are out of your hands and we all make mistakes we're humans that's what we're here for so we also have to forgive ourselves for making mistakes, you know, and it, just because you made a mistake doesn't mean that God is condemning you to hell, you know, forever. <laughs> well, abs absolutely. And and the thing is, if you've got a loved one right now that you're watching this back and you've got a loved one that, that you know, you know, could be healed if they were just to go to someone like yourself and, you know, get that special healing, uh, which they're not going to get from anywhere else, or at least just to sit, you know, for them to heal themselves in a sense, to sit down and talk to their body. But, you know, if they watch this and they think, oh, that's all they've got to do, you can't force this on anyone. If, if someone's not ready to hear this message, you'll just upset them. Well, you know, even when people are ready to hear the message and are ready to try, it's not like it's a snap. It is work. You have to stick with it. And, um, you know, the thing, you can't force anything on anybody, though. I, you know, I, with people, I always recommend, like some uh, somebody will say, oh, my family member needs to come see you. or blah, blah, blah. All you can do is say, like, here's this great book I read. Check it out. Or, you know, I heard somebody talking the other day about the body having a wisdom. Gee, is that something you're interested in? I mean, you know, like, so you don't push it. You just mention and see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's so important. But you, you would have seen a whole range of clientele to realize that. And, you know, you, you, you've done it for so long. You would have, you would have seen these different types of, of folks. And, uh, and that's no judgment neither. That's just where people are at. Yes. You, know, you can't judge. Exactly. Yeah. And it you might know, not be in this lifetime they're ready to do this kind of thing. Absolutely. And you know what? There may be even a bigger reason for that for the family members around them. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You know, um, but it, it is probably true to say, and I've come across this a number of times that, you know, yes, we can take our issues when we cross over on the other side with us. If you, you know, for those who believe that there is another, there, you know, that we came from somewhere, we go back to it. But I always seem to get told that it's, it's so more empowering to sort it out on this side, so much more empowering to not take it with you and to have, to have healed it this side. So what do you, what's your take on that as well, that to, to, rather than leaving your issues, trying to you know, heal them on this side and, and not ignore what the body's telling you when it's crying out in pain? Right. I, I do truly believe that the issues that come up that you're aware of, you are aware of them because now is the time to deal with them. If there was, you know, we can't, uh, heal anything that we're not aware of. So awareness is the key. If you're aware of something you need to work on, now is the time for it. And if you heal it now and then do go on, 
you'll go on to, to better things and perhaps other issues. But if you take these ones with you, you, do, you have even more, more work to do later. So it's like uh, the getting ahead of the game, you know. If you're aware of it, that means it's time now. Yeah. And, and maybe you're doing justice to those on the other side as well, that by healing it this side, you're actually healing the bigger picture that side. You never know, do you? Oh, my gosh. I do. I tell you, where I go with people is where they want to go. And I do have clients who believe in their power to heal ancestral issues, especially uh, lately there's been several cases of uh, women dealing with the, the female heritage and the, what they're carrying from their female line. And uh, sometimes women, you know, people will say, oh, women are more into doing these things. Uh, I have many male clients who also want to deal with these issues. So um, it's not just a woman's thing. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Ab ab absolutely not. Um, it, it, uh, just a sort of final question on, on, on symptoms that, that, that people come to you with. Does it always have to be... Um, a, a sort of physical symptom in the body, as in the sort in the sense of um, you know, I can't walk properly, or it hurts to sit down, or my back hurts. Can 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 the symptoms be depression as well, in a sense? Yes, uh, many times the physical issues <clears throat> convince people to make a move because they can't continue to work or play or do whatever it is they like or want to do. So physical issues are very common for people to come with. But many times also it's recurring emotional issues. You know, I realize that I, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm angry. Um, you know, something's happening in my life and someone said you could help me. So it is a wide range, but usually it's something that's interfering with the normal everyday life it's and that interference is the impetus <laughs> to seek help mm. could could that be as well where people just seem to be in a place where they don't feel that they're depressed but they're a lot more sensitive about subjects you know there's that they, they, they've changed so someone's changed so much they're not the same person in a sense it's almost like mental health has taken a bigger a big effect on them um but and the, all this has happened because there's something that life is trying to tell them about some other aspects of their life which is not right right exactly again you know these uh, moodiness can affect your ability to keep a job to to stay in a relationship and when you start to see things recurring uh that you're you know, you might think every job I get, I have the same boss and then I end up having to quit or I get fired. Well, there's an issue there that it's life trying to tell you, you keep having that recurring situation because there's a lesson. There's something you have a mental block about and it really helps to have somebody assist you in looking uh, with and gaining a different perspective so you can discover it. I, I don't ever want to tell anybody this is what's wrong with you. What I want to do is ask questions in such a way to help that person discover for themselves what their issue is. And when you have that epiphany, there's nothing more powerful than that. No, no. And do you find that the clients, once they've, when they have done the work with you, and, and, and or even, even in the process of doing the work, there's a real sense of a lot more self-love for themselves, which is a real healing aspect for the body as well? Yes, exactly. You know, when we learn to like ourselves, you know, to accept who we are as a person and our uniqueness. You know, there'll never be another me. There'll never be another you. And when we can realize and appreciate and love ourselves and value our individual unique contribution to the world, boy, it's a whole different life. And you'll show up in all your creative, uh, unique expression in that yeah, way. Because Yes, because some of this illness, I'm guessing with the clients that come see you, yes, they may have what about, I keep using the word bad back, but yeah, okay, they may have a bad back, right? But that, that actually, actually the cause of that really is that, you know, it's because life's trying to say to them, you're not living your purpose. You're not doing what you, what you promised yourself you was going to come here to do in the first place. You're doing everything else, but it's right. not going to make you ill. Right, exactly. It's like, it's almost like the body, you know, I, um, it was Deepak Chopra that said, uh, our body is eavesdropping on our every thought. And uh, it's so, so the body has a perspective of our life 
that sometimes our mind wants to uh, hide things from us or ignore it or something, and the body goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to bring this up in your face, and you are going to feel this. If you're, you know, you might not want to acknowledge it, but you're going to feel it. So. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, absolutely. And I bet you have a lot of empathy for clients that come see you that are in a lot of pain as well, because it's not nice to see people suffering. And I bet, you know, you, you're there just trying to do your best for them when they when they come there without taking on, like we said, their, their, their karma or their responsibility in a sense, which is a fine right. balance. But um, with, uh, as my sort of final questions here, because we're getting to the end of the interview, believe it or not, <laughs> <laughs> and we're in a right role uh, right now. But um, obviously being so touchy-feeling with clients and stuff, has that helped you for you personally to develop your intuitive side your your sixth sense your 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 that that deeper part of you because i'm, I'm guessing if you have developed that part and what, what whatever has developed it which you'll tell me in a minute but if you have that must help you to get in contact with their soul in a sense to see what the problem may be without them telling you sometimes oh definitely i i know people joke with me all the time they say well i'm not going to say anything and see if you can you know tell <laughs> uh what's happening because it is my my mentor Alana Rubenfeld, the founder of the Rubenfeld Synergy Method. She really taught me that the actual tissue, the way it feels, tells a story about the person. So I've gotten now, so I can I can touch somebody, and you can tell if they like to dance or if they're easy to laugh or from the way their body feels, the tissue. Uh, if they're guarded, if they don't trust people easily, if they don't like to be pushed around, you can feel that through the body tissue. And so when I'm working with somebody, because I'm open to that, many times I'll get a picture in my mind or I'm right with them as they're imagining, I see also. So there's a kind of mixture between us and it, it, it definitely helps to be present to other sides of the being of the person more than just what the words are saying. Sometimes um, the words aren't congruent with the true picture, but the body is. <laughs> so Absolutely. So it may not be a case of what they're saying, it's what they're not saying. Exactly. And the body says it all. The body tells the truth. Mm. So you can't, you can't yeah. hide from me. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. No. Um, <laughs> What would you say? Okay, then absolutely. We've not mentioned this. Your website address as well. Oh yes. Well, uh, the website is my name, Tony T O N I Luisa L U I S A Rivera R I V E R A. So it's Tony Luisa Rivera dot com. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter with the same handle, and um, the book is the Propelled Heart moving from injury to insight and that's available on amazon.com as either a kindle book or a paperback and i have the paperback right here <laughs> it's so pretty that's a good plug <laughs> and i look forward to if anyone has questions uh on my i also oh, i almost forgot that after every chapter in the in the self help part of the book, there's a body mind exercise that you can work with yourself, and I have those as free MP3 downloads on my website. So that's my gift to all your listeners. They go to my website, they can download uh, the the MP3s and have me guide you through the exercises that are in the book. Okay, well, you'd be glad to know that throughout the interview, your book's been coming up on the screen as a full screen image and uh, with your website as well. I just wanted to add to your website in there, just if this becomes an audio version in the future only, so with, just without the video. Um, what would you say then, uh, Tony, is the most important message of your book? I would say the most important message is that your body is your greatest ally and that you do have the resources within you and you can access those resources through your body so that you can take an active role in healing yourself. Absolutely. Well, you know what? It's been an absolute joy to have you on. It really has been fascinating. And I'd just like to say, Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. Well, we've come to an end on tonight's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Shows official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You may also find out more on all past and upcoming guests on the show via themoreshow.co.uk and do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe.